Let's just hear one. So let me start. So today we're talking about macOS Noma, and you probably already heard about it that Apple decided to change a lot actually. So from now on, let me quickly let people in. From now on, um, there are no mail plugins allowed in Apple Mail anymore. So, but the good news is um, we worked very hard the last actually four months only to make all the 11 May Butler features compatible with the new macOS Sonoma. And today I'm going to quickly show you what has changed. So the list of changes looks very long. So we have a new sidebar, which I will show you later. There are some features have a new location in Apple Mail now. We are showing a so-called message ID. We had to move the tracking in for a little bit, and we had to introduce a completely new way of making the features work. We call it internally Maybridge, and we had to discontinue our undo send feature. So let's start with the new sidebar. Um, in the old version of Mail Butler, we had the sidebar directly in Apple Mail, and back then we already got some feedback that people said taking too much space away in the Apple Mail window and stuff like that. And now we actually introduce a so-called floating sidebar. So the sidebar can be located everywhere on your desktop so you can move it around, but you can also attach it right next to your Apple Mail window like you used to do um, by clicking on this um, little icon up here. It's um, circled up here. I think you can see my mouse. And of course, this is something completely new, especially the user experience is completely new for you, all of you. And we are encouraging everyone to, to share their feedback, what they like, what they dislike, because this is just the first version we came up with in the last month. But I'm pretty sure in the future we will modify it to make it even more user friendly for all of you. Besides the um, new sidebar, we also had to move some of May Butler's um, feature buttons out of the uh, Apple UI, Apple Mail UI, but they are simply now located in the in the sidebar. And we had to move the Smart Send later out of the Compose window into the, the sidebar, the Snooze button, the Tracking button, and also the Message Template button. But I will show you uh, show it to you later during a short live demo. Also could be very confusing at the beginning. Now you can see a message ID and a message ID is always actually part of every email, but normally it's hidden in the header of the email. We need to show it there so um, our sidebar can connect our features to the correct email. So for example, when you create a note, a task or tracking, it was always the case that it's connected with the message ID. Now we simply need to display it. Um, it's important to note only you can see it. So when you send an email or yeah, when you send an email, the rec uh, uh, receiver will not see it. Um, the tracking info on an email level. So normally you always saw these little check marks directly in Apple Mail inside the email or inside the message list. Now you can see also there in the sidebar. You see if the email was open or not and also click on the see details button to see the tracking details, which was already the case in the old version of Mail Butler. So and also what I mentioned before in the email list, so in the message list, there are no longer the check marks, but I will show it also later in the dashboard, you now have the option to, to check the, the email list and see the, the check marks there in the list view. Um, Mailbridge, um, this is something you will only, in best case, only have to do once in the beginning. So when you start using one of our May, one of Mail Butler's features, it will ask you to authorize um, Apple Mail or authorize Mail Butler to, to for your email account. So you need to click Authorize and follow the on-screen instructions to build that Mailbridge or connect that Mailbridge with your email server. Um, to make, for example, email tracking work, but also notes and tasks or sent later. Um, important to note, like every feature from Mail Butler, it's uh, designed uh, or developed with a privacy first approach. So we never read, store, or analyze 
yeah, or, or sell any kind of your data of your emails, anything. And emails, the, all the emails are, will be still sent from your email server, not from our email server. And as I said in the beginning, you only need to do it once per email account, and then it's set up, and then you're good to go with all the um, the future emails. Um, last but not least, um, we decided to discontinue our understand functionality, which was already outside of the of the May Butler environment. Um, we had it um, as a separate free plugin um, because we the one second, yeah. Um, we decided to do so because Apple is since last year providing a built-in understand feature, and here's a short instruction actually how to to enable it. So in the composing tab in the mail settings, you find this option where you can choose for how long you want to to understand an email. Yeah, let's directly come to the demo. As I said, feel free to interrupt me. Also, if you experience already some issues, just let me know. We're not many people, so we can look into your case during the webinar even. So I will stop sharing my screen here quickly. Show you my inbox. So you're seeing my screen now. As you can see from the from the wallpaper, I didn't update to macOS Sonoma yet because many companies actually um, choose to wait a few more months until you update to the new operating system. There are different reasons for it. The first reason is Apple is still pushing some updates, yeah, fixing some, some bugs, but also giving other developers like May Butler a little bit more time to fine tune the software for the new operating system. Good, so you can see my Apple Mail looks very similar to yours, probably. Um, and when you click on the Apple Mail and May Butler is installed, you see this little icon up here, which is already new. And this icon actually is opening and closing the sidebar. So opening, closing the sidebar, super straightforward. As I said in the beginning, this is a new floating sidebar, so I have the possibility to move it around. I'm always looking on my second screen, so now I even have the possibility to move it on my uh, my second screen, have it there. That's actually how I'm normally working now because I like to have it always there, visible on my second screen, and then working on my emails on my my first screen. But as I, let's move it back so you can see it. If you want to have it the the old way, all you need to do is simply clicking on this icon. So it also says attached to mail. Clicking on it it glues itself to it and then it stays with the Apple Mail window when you move it around. When you move it too far to this side, it jumps over to the left side, so it's always there. Um, that's about the floating sidebar. Then the relocation of the fun features. So when you compose a new email, normally you had the se second send button here for, for send later. You had the email tracking up here. You had the message templates somewhere up here. Now they are all located in a sidebar. So as you see, it's not a big shift. Um, so you can set the delivery date when you want to send the email later. You can insert a message template. Or you can turn on off tracking or choose if you want to op only open tracking or open and clicks. Um, that's about this. Then about the tracking info, um, that's actually something a lot of users are complaining at the moment and we are investigating ways to show it better. So normally you saw in the message list if the email has been open or not. Yeah. And even besides the site, but you can even check your dashboard and go in the email list view. And from there you see, takes a moment, we have some performance issues at the moment. And here you see like the list you, you used to, you see directly at a glance if one of these emails has been opened or not. And now it's even better. You can filter it. You could say, give me all emails not opened in the last seven days. Click apply and then you see it. That's about the list view. And that's probably no, no, the last thing is the mail bridge. So I already set up the mail bridge. So the mail bridge is active for me 
and you can see it actually in the screen banner up here. Good. So as I said before, um, we are not that many people. Feel free to use the chat or to speak up um, to ask any kind of questions, um, especially if you are, or maybe I'm asking you a question and you all should use the chat now. Who's already on macOS Sonoma of you? Or who's not on Mac not on macOS Sonoma? Better question. Who's still on macOS Ventura or older? So updated to Sonoma on it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Most of you are already on macOS Sonoma. Not on it, OK. Because I have one advice. For everyone who is not on it yet, for example, Volker, my advice would be to wait at least a few more weeks longer um, because there's still some betas being real, uh, not betas, um, some updates being released to macOS Sonoma, which we always need to adjust to. And also we're still working behind the scenes to make the, the user experience even better. Because as I said, we had to redo the entire Mailbox Club product for Apple Mail. And so please wait for the rest. Um, my second question, who's already on Sonoma, did you already install MailButler for Sonoma? Or is someone of you is someone of you there who needs the download link to install MailButler for Sonoma? Well, honestly, Mailbutler is working great. That's nice to hear. Yeah, okay, the developer version. Um, when you're on the developer version, you would get like an automated update very soon. Um, down here on the little gear, you can trigger it even. When you click check for updates, it checks if there's, uh, actually there was just released a new update. Um, so it's 7002. It was released, I think an hour ago. Um, so you can click install update and then install the latest version. Other features of Mailbox, I'm having issues with AI function. We can talk about the other features as well, Volker. Let's finish macOS Sonoma first. So is there anyone who's not on MailButler for macOS Sonoma? Because you would need to install the beta version. Or maybe I can show you a different flow for all of you who are not on May Butler on for Sonoma yet, I would like you to go to our website, click on try for free, then here get May Butler for Apple Mail, click download and install that version. This version is not the macOS Sonoma version, but it will trigger a screen for you which says, hey, you're not, uh, you are already on macOS Sonoma, please install Mac May Butler for macOS Sonoma. Then you simply click on it, install it, and then you're there. Good, I will stay two, three minutes longer. So if you have any kind of question about May Butler, even if it's not about macOS Sonoma, feel free to use the chat. Um, for the rest, have a nice, nice evening. It's already 5.30 in Germany. I'm not sure where you where are you tuning in, um, and talk to you soon. Thank you.